amigos? <laughs> ¿Qué onda, weón? Just kidding. I hope you're having a beautiful day today. Recently, it was September 18th, which is Chilean Independence Day. And for those of you who didn't know, soy chilena. Growing up eating Chilean empanadas was such a fond memory when my abuelita would come over. And my brother is actually the one in my family who's like the best at making the dough. And we all had our little part. And it was so delicious and warm and yummy afterwards. Unfortunately, it's not 100% AIP compliant and it obviously is typically not gluten-free. So I thought today I would attempt to make a gluten-free version. Now, this is not AIP compliant um, because it has like eggs and quite a few other ingredients that I wouldn't typically eat with obviously if you're sticking to AIP. But because it's a special occasion, I thought why not, I'll go ahead and have a go at trying to make some gluten-free Chilean empanadas. Now the recipe that I'm going after is one that my abuelito or my grandmother has taught us and like my mom and my family. So if you look up some recipes on Google, there might be some people, I don't know, there's a lot of different variations, even between like Chile and other countries, a lot of people have different variations of what they consider to be an empanada. So this is just what I've been taught, what I grew up with, and what I have on hand. I'm kind of nervous because I've never made gluten-free dough before. My husband has this brown rice flour, um, and I will say, like, I don't tend to eat rice that often, so if this ends up making me feel like really yucky afterwards, then I obviously won't use this for occasions going forward. So we have some ground beef, some raisins, some olives, onion, eggs that I'm going to boil. I don't have a rolling pin, so I'm going to use this as my rolling pin, so hopefully that works. I don't know if I'll be able to keep this on the entire time, but we're going to try. I really love the fact that my mom made a good point of ensuring that we kept our Chilean culture in the household growing up. Um, you know, waking up, we'd have platano con leche, which is like banana milk, uh, like every morning. It was so yummy. If you'd like to hear more about Chilean superstitions or see some other Chilean recipes or dishes, mote con huesillo is another drink that I freaking love, but again, the gluten you know, the wheat allergy gets in the way. Um, Bebre is really delicious. Uh, you know, their Chilean sopapillas is something we always grew up with too. So if you'd like to see any more of those, let me know in the comment section down below. I love you. Okay, get out of the kitchen. So I have the eggs on the pot ready to boil. So we have this dicer slicer. It makes meal prepping like really easy, but it's kind of a pain in the ass to clean. One of the traditions that I loved growing up with was that we, when we lost a tooth, we would throw it to the rat on the roof. <laughs> I used to make boiled eggs all the time when I lived in Australia. I would make um, like a smashed egg sandwich. So good. But whenever I cut out eggs doing the AIP like elimination, whenever I've tried to eat eggs in a certain way, it, it like makes me feel nauseous. I might make some empanadas without the eggs and just have the olives and the raisins. The eggs are then boiling, so I'm just going to let them cool down before I crack and peel them. And I'm gonna take the onions that I just diced up with a dicer slicer and fry them on a pan. Also, I would really love y'all's feedback on when I'm doing these types of cooking videos. Again, I'm still kind of iffy about this setup, um, but for now, it's the only way I can figure out how to get everything kind of in the shot. Any constructive commentary would be appreciated. I wanted to say as well, typically for the seasoning, I think you would use like chili powder and uh, cumin and those kinds, like those kind of flavored paprika. For ground beef, my husband prefers to use cavenders and like slappy mama seasoning. So we're gonna use that instead. I'm gonna crack and peel the eggs while the meat and onions cool down so then everything will be in its separate bowl and then we can start on the dough and then the assembly. So now we're gonna chop up the eggs. So I like to cut them in half and then, you know, like a couple more halves, so quarters. <laughs> All right, everyone, just an update. Uh, my husband came to help me and for the life of us, we just cannot get this rice flour to work. I've looked up quite a few different recipes and it's like no matter what we do, it's just not 
it's not working. So to salvage this, unfortunately, I'm just going to mix all the insides together and put it over some chips, like maybe some nacho or sweet potato chips. I'm so sorry that I couldn't show you the process of like making the empanada crescent and frying it and everything, but I'm just gonna have to call it because this is just making me so frustrated. I think that a solution would be to get gluten-free, like pre-made pastry rolls or, or sheets. I know that when I lived in Australia and I made empanadas, that's what I used, but he, I, I don't know. I don't know if I've ever seen them at Kroger or Walmart, so. I've got a lot of cleaning up to do. I've just busted out some sweet potato chips and I'm going to mix it together and kind of make it like nachos. This was definitely a fail, but hopefully in the future, next time I try this, I will be more prepared now that I've experienced it. So the combination of these flavors is really delicious. I've always loved the contrast between like the raisins and then the savory meats and the olives. So if you haven't ever tried Chilean empanadas, definitely give this a go. I'm going to put the recipe to the normal way that you cook empanadas down below. And normally I'd put down like the recipe that I found for the gluten-free dough, but because it didn't work, I'm not going to recommend it. <laughs> so if you have had Chilean empanadas, let me know what you think of them down below. Like I said, I'm determined to make this work, so I'll be back another day with hopefully a successful creation. And wherever you are in the world, I hope you're having a beautiful day. Bye.